Hey, it's your buddy Ken here with the top five tips and tricks that you'll want to know for your new DJI Mini 2. One of the first things you want to do is click on the three little dots in the upper right hand corner. Many people will keep this set under 400 feet just to be safe. That's good. However, I leave mine set to the absolute maximum just in case I need to return to home over something tall. I won't limit the distance and I generally put the return to home right at 400. Many of you are wondering how I took off at night when the lighting conditions uh, weren't optimal. The drone asked me one time if I wanted to be able to take off in low lighting conditions and I said yes. After you click that setting and say it's okay to take off in the dark, you can as I will show you here with this gaffer's tape as now the camera is completely blocked. It thinks it's nighttime and so the warning comes up that I can still take off. Sorry, buddy, I didn't mean to blind you. There we go. <laughs> the next thing I want to talk to you about is the safety tab under remote identification. This is for future use. It defaults to off. UUID isn't something to keep babies from happening. No, that's something completely different. UUID in the drone world is unique user identification. And you can turn that on if you really, really want to. Um, there's not a, a use for it yet, isn't being implemented. But you can also turn on your identification and flight information, and you can put in your name, whatever you want there. Again, this is for future use. You don't have to do this now. It's if remote ID becomes law in the land. In the meantime, if you don't want the government up in your business, well, you can just put that in there. I don't want the government up in my business. The next thing's really cool, and that is the Find My Drone option here. You can see where I am, according to the, the GIPIS. And then if you can't see it, if you don't know where it is, it's in a field, in the tree, in the tall grass or something, you just hit this start flashing and beeping. And it flashes, and it beeps. Thing, I'm over here, come rescue me. You can use other maps if you are using your phone and you're connected to the internet. You can use a Google map. And then if your drone is far away from you, you can walk right up to it. In the camera section, I would have the cache on while you're recording. That records to your device in case you crash in the water and you need proof to DJI of what happened because very often you're not going to be able to recover your drone if you crash in the water. Uh, you can choose how much storage you want to use on your device. On the transmission page, it defaults to dual band, but you can manually switch between 2.4 and 5.8 gigahertz. Generally, 5.8 gigahertz is for distance, and 2.4 gigahertz is for penetration. But I just leave it on dual band because if you're in a city environment, it can decide what's best for the conditions in which you're flying. Next, move over to the gimbal control and turn this on. Allow upward gimbal rotation. With this on, it'll let you move your gimbal above horizontal. So if you're filming a tall building or a tree or something where you need to look up, you don't have to fly the drone up. You can simply tilt the camera up and get it. The next tip is something I've been asked about many, many times. And it's a little more difficult to find with the GoFly app. And I'll just show you here. And that is your flight recorder or saved telemetry. Go into the main screen here and then click profile. And you'll see this more tab. Click that and there you go. This is your flight data center. This keeps a log of all of your flights that you've had. I'll go back to this one. I believe this is the one. Yeah. This is the one where I had my nephew flying over to his school. So you can see the home point here and you can drag this and show exactly where you've flown. We looked at the school, we turned around and we came back. So if there's any discrepancy with a neighbor, with authorities, and you want to show them exactly 
GPS exactly where you've flown, you can do it here. You say, well, that guy flew right over my house. Man, he drove down Louisiana and he flew right over my house. He was looking at Ermagard. She was out sunbathing. And you could be like, no, no. No, Jethro, slow your roll because you can see here, I did not fly over Ermagard's house. I was not spying on you. But here's the coolest thing about the flight data. Right here in the upper right-hand corner, if you click on the little control knob, that will bring up the recorded data from your controls. So you can go back and see exactly how you've flown. You see there? It shows the yaw and throttle. So you can review your flights and see exactly what you were doing. This flight data is linked to your count, by the way, so it saves all of this stuff from previous flights, from previous drones, all under your count, all in the same spot. Cool, huh? You can choose which aircraft you want to see, or you can see all of the aircraft. Now, there's one more very important thing that I've talked about before in previous videos, but I'll talk about it again, and that is how to start and stop. To start, sticks in. That's how you start, okay? Don't do sticks in again to stop. You just hold down the throttle and it will stop. There is something in the controller for emergency stops only, and that's in the safety tab under advanced safety settings. You can set this emergency option to do exactly what I suggested you shouldn't do, but there are a few situations where you might need it. And so you can turn this on to use anytime, of course, with caution. I will show you what it does in here. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to sticks in, turn on the drone, and then take it off and hover. Okay. Now, it's in flight, and I'm going to do the sticks in. This will shut it off midair. <laughs> it's a little wonky, but it, it does it. Here's a, here's a bonus tip. Don't do that, <laughs> what I just did. Don't do that. And for the final tip, we head over to the workbench. This is something you'll need to know if you ever need to replace your propellers. The Mini 2's propeller configuration is something called props in, meaning that the propellers spin in towards the camera. Some FPV quads will go the opposite direction for various reasons. In the propeller kit, in each pouch, you get a little package of screws. DJI is kind enough to put three of them in here. Fortunately, these screws are, in fact, magnetic, which is something that comes in handy dandy if you ever lose them in the grass. Each screw comes with the teeniest, tiniest bit of Loctite on it, but you'll want to have your own tube handy just in case. Link in the description. If you ever remove the screws and reuse them, put a little bit, a little bit of Loctite on them. To ensure that you put the prop blades on the motors the correct way, look for this little mark here to correspond with this little indentation on the arm. Some props have no mark. Put those on with the arm that has no mark as well. Marks, marks, no marks, no marks. Simple. And then while holding the motor steady, screw these down and tighten them. But not too tight because it's very small. You don't want to strip them. That can happen easily. Maybe you're wondering what this is. Well, this is industrial strength Velcro and the Loom Cube strobe attaches to it. There you go. Now you can fly at night, legally. Link in the description. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I really do appreciate you guys. Good luck with your Mini 2s. It is an amazing, amazing drone and you will love it for years to come or until three months from now when the Mini 3 comes out. Buh and buy. People ask me, Ken, can you fly this without the app? Well, let's find out. We'll just disconnect the app, disconnect the phone, give her a go. The answer is yes. Why you would want to do that, I don't know. But you can. Okay, so, so if 
far. It flies just like a regular. Uh, can you flip it over? Yeah. Wow!